messages your own girl don't have enough capacity to hold. Right. There's some messages I know your little spiritual friend will not give you. He said, come down to my house. Y'all not talking to me today. And there I will give you what you need. In order to be made over again, you must be detail-oriented. The problem with most people is they follow. He gives you five instructions and you follow three and you remain the same. It's important that you do everything that God tells you to do. It's important the littlest thing that God tells you. I'm, I'm going to talk to this little analytical and critical generation. You break down everything, but you can't produce nothing. But don't you break down what God told you and fulfill everything. Yeah, you stop drinking, but you still twerking. You're not to fulfill his end, but you're not detail-oriented in the structure he gave you. Let me just talk to folk that wonder why God gives them my new things. You fire the quarter on the, on the ground, and God say, go return that to the person you saw. Drop it. That's because you don't listen. He does not give people detailed instructions that don't listen to the small things. So you find yourself asking, why is God telling me something so little? Because you don't listen to nothing. He's trying to get you to listen to a little something. He can't give you this big, grand scheme of saving the world when you can't even save your day. Oh, you're not talking to me today. I know you want God to make you a sign and a wonder, but you don't have, you don't obey instructions like a sign and a wonder. You don't even, oh, keeps you well because he's after your obedience. So the thing that you hang your hat on is the thing that he's coming from. If you won't let that girl go, he will take that girl from you. If you won't let that boy go, he will take that boy from you. Y'all not talking to me today because he's after everything that comes between you and him because he's trying to make you the person that he created you to be and there's something standing in the way. If he said you're going to be a businessman, Make sure you get fired off of that job. Your boss won't like you. Your co-workers won't talk to you. He's going to make sure whatever's standing in the way, he's going to get it out the way because he's trying to make you over again. If you get too caught up in that car, that car got to go so you can realize you're better off driving than walking. If you make your house, oh, y'all not talking to me. If you make your house greater than that house got to go because he's trying to make you over again. And anything stands that's right. Somebody said you got to be detail oriented. Verse 3, he said, so I went, he was obedient. Jeremiah was a prophet. One thing about being a prophet, it takes a high level of obedience. So he said, so I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. So he walks down to the potter's house. He didn't know what he was going to encounter. He gets down to the potter's house and he said, he saw him working at the wheel. God has a way of showing you where you are to get you where you are going. Have you ever saw God working on somebody, but you thought your situation was better than them, but God was trying to show you, yeah, you need work too. Then uh, all my folks, they want to judge sin. The prostitute, I'm not a prostitute, but you sleep around, you might as well get paid for it. Y'all not talking to me today. Don't go around giving away free stuff. You ain't no different. You still sleeping around. And guess what? He said, when a man thinks upon a thing and lust, he's already committed sin in his heart. So even if you didn't do it when you thought it, you were just as guilty as the prostitute. And you better than me and you don't do it like this. No, this ain't the place for that. This is the place for forgiveness. This is the place for grace. This is the place for love. You ain't no better than nobody else. I know I got a new coat on, but I'm just as ratchet as you without God. You're not talking to me today. If I don't keep myself in the face of God, I'll be dropping it too. If I don't keep myself, y'all don't like me right now. If I don't keep myself in the face of God, I'll be smoking it too.
there. God not only shows you as a finished product, but he wants you to see that you're broken. Most people can't get healed because they never deal with the brokenness. If I'm going to get you to the place that you need to be, I got to deal with the fact that you're still hurting from that old relationship. If I'm going to get you married, I got to deal with the fact that you got issues from the last relationship. If I'm going to get you into finances, I got to get you to understand that you manage money improperly. If I'm going to get you into a place where you got a good attitude and you can lead people, I got to show you that sometimes you snap on people. And it's not the fact that people don't like you, they don't like how you act. showed up. But they like you because you show concern. But y'all not talking to me. All right, all right. So everybody wants to fit in. Yes, Jesus. When you've been set aside and set apart. Yes. Everybody wants to be received. Yes. But yet you don't allow God to make you over. Yes. Right. You still got attitude. Y'all don't want to talk right. Yeah. You still be tripping at the wrong time. Yeah. You get the word of the Lord, but you're not obedient. Right. God told you to watch that. Don't say that. You say it anyway. Right. You're always getting in your feelings. You know about your yeah. feelings. when you should be confident. Right. Your feelings, your feelings, your feelings. Yeah. Right. When you should be focused, you're over there thinking about stuff that don't even matter. Yeah. Your feelings, your feelings, your feelings. And if God gonna make you over again, you're gonna have to get uncomfortable. Right. Y'all not right. talking to me today. You're gonna have to bite your lip. Y'all don't like me today. Right. You're gonna have to change how you respond to everything right. so that God can do something new in you. Listen, a new car is not a new you. That's right. just right. That's just something you got, not something you are. God in here. You, you can't know where you're going unless you understand where you're coming from. Right, right. I need to be on the wheel because, man, I'm not the person that I need to be. Right. I need God to put me on the wheel because my attitude been slipping lately. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I know you've been in church and you thought God was just going to fix you overnight, but every now and then you find yourself backslidden. Yes. Yes. Every now and then you find yourself doing things that you thought you had got delivered yes. from. Somebody said, Lord, Amen. put me back on the Lord. wheel. <laughs> Lord, begin to make me over again. I need you to work on that area again. I need you to rebate that area. Y'all not talking with me. I need you to go and touch and work in that area. You hear me, Papas? Every now and then, I need God to go and touch some areas that I've started to slip. Because we got this self-righteous thing to think we already complete. But really, I think it's a lifelong journey for God to get us. So come on, Lord, put me back on the altar again. What happened to the altar call when we would lay on the altar till we felt God deliver us? We didn't need the preacher to make an appeal. We would come up and say, Lord, I need you. You got these small folk that want you to preach the right message, the right time, and the right place for most but I need you to understand, some of you got keys to the church and don't even come in. But when it's open, you won't even come to the altar. I need you to fix your mind and realize you are a small brat in the kingdom of God. And you need deliverance from yourself. Because the altar is open anytime that you want it. And it got what you need more than the preacher does. But the preacher got to come preach some message and perform for you and make you feel good. When really God is, you sung the song, Jesus is the center. But you want something from the pastor. I need you to understand, if he becomes what you need, then you don't get the God that you need. Jesus is the center of it all. Is he really the center? Is he really the one that you want? Then go get Jesus then. Stop tripping on people. Yes, yes, yes. I think I just made it to the second row. I'm going to be on the third row in a minute. I'm going to work this whole room from a done. Because I didn't come to perform. I came to help you today. some stuff you don't understand, but God wants to make you over again. God wants to do something new in you again. And say, Lord, put me on the potter's wheel and make me over again. Am I helping anybody today? You can't know where you're going unless you locate where you are. Where are you right? Where are you really? Not the, not the fixed up you, not the cute you, not the situational you. You know, we got this generation that cook up something and make their life be all right. No, it don't matter where you put yourself. If you ain't in the right spirit, you ain't in the right location. It don't matter how you put hair, how you put dye on it, how you put clothes on it. It don't matter how you dress it up. It don't matter how much weave you put on it. If you are hurting on the inside, weave is not going to take care of your hurt. If you are hurting on the inside, makeup cannot cover your hurt. You are hurting on the inside, you can go get 12 outfits. 
minutes. Right. You might feel good for the day, but at the end of the day, you got to lay down with you. Somebody say, Lord, make me your woman. In verse 4, this is my favorite verse. He says, but the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. It wasn't the fact that it was marred, young lady. It was the fact that it was in the potter's hands marred. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody got that. Let me work. Let me talk to this side. He said when he got to the potter's house out of obedience, the potter was on the wheel working with the clay. But the thing that he recognized was that it was not together on the wheel, but yet he was working with it. You've gotten frustrated in your condition, but yet he's working with you. You go in the church, you in his hands, you feel the present, but yet you're still marred. I need you to understand, you might be in the place where he's still working with you. He's not done. He hasn't made your nose yet. He ain't made y'all not talking about it. It was marred. Let's talk about marred for a minute. Marred is to damage or spoil to a certain extent. Render. So sometimes he has to damage you before he perfects you. and the sheep had got caught up and in order for him to rescue the sheep he had to break the sheep legs yeah. in order to help the sheep yeah. see you've been handicapped because yeah. God's trying to help you yeah. you've been marred so it had to get uglier before it got prettier yeah. Yeah, sometimes loneliness comes before he gives you new friends sometimes you gotta be alone before he gives you a husband yeah. sometimes you gotta y'all not talking to me here today I need you to understand it was marred it says to spoil to damage what? You've been wondering why God, y'all not talking to me here. You've been wondering why God been spoiling your plans. You had planned. You had planned. You had planned. You just knew you were just going to do this and you knew you were just going to do that and you knew you were going to date him and he was going to be the one. And God come in and say, no, I'm going to save you for me. He been spoiling your plans. You're in the pot of things, Lord, if you don't know what to do. Nobody talking to me today. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hand. Bar means to, to damage or spoil to a certain extent. Render, to render less perfect. Yes. Yes. To render less perfect, less attractive, and less useful. Yep. Yep. Y'all not here today. Yep. Right. Before God uses you, he don't let nobody use you. Before, when you're in high school, Teacher. you can be the best high school player in the whole land. Yeah. You can come out number one, number one player in the whole world, blue chip, number one. All the colleges want you. Yes. Get on that team, and it's a bunch of other number ones right, in the country. Right, right. So God said, okay, you're good. You're going to be good, but you need to sit on the bench and get experience. Yes. <laughs> so how am I going to learn experience? <laughs> By watching and not playing. Yes. You get to practice, but you don't get to play. Y'all not talking to me today. And you have to wait till your turn comes. If somebody get injured, if there's a need for your skill set, y'all not talking to me here today. Before God uses you, he has to render you less useful so that you can learn how to be used when the time comes. Maybe you are on the beach because he's teaching you about your attitude. Maybe you are on the beach because he's teaching you how to bring your flesh under suggestion. Maybe you're on the beach. Y'all not helping me in here today. For your harm, but actually God has marred you because it's for your good. Yeah. It's a part of the process so He can use you. Yeah. So He had to put you on the bench. Look at your neighbor say, You might be on the bench. <laughs> Mar. The subject was damaged. The subject was damaged when He started. The subject had been spoiled or gone bad over time. Yeah. The subject was less perfect than we needed it to be. Yeah. The subject was less attractive after the work began. Yeah. I know back in the day you wanted to put blue on your eyelids. <laughs> you wanted to dangle bamboo earrings, at least two pair. <laughs> oh yeah, y'all not talking to me in here today, church. Y'all not hearing me. I know you I know you can put something on and dress it up, but then when God starts working at you, he starts making you look less modest. He'll tell you you put too much makeup on. He'll tell you you showing too much style. You have to be less attractive so he can teach you how to be attractive. I'm not, I don't know if I'm helping anybody. I think you want me to talk about blessing and, and how God going to use you. But before he uses you, he got to make you over again. Before he take you to another dimension, he going to make you less of what you were so he can make you a greater you when he get done with you. Am I helping anybody today? When God begins to deal with you, it's some stuff on your body you 
you can't show. Yeah. Right. You know, fellas, they want they want to show all the taco meat on their shirt. You got, you got gold chain all tangled up in your taco meat on your Okay, y'all can go over here. I, I can't get no here. You know, you want to get sexy and show your chest. You know, look, what they got the little muscle shirt you walking around. Well, see, when you would you work out in that thing, but to lead the gym, you're like, I need to cover this up. This ain't God. This is not God. Are y'all in here today? You got to get some things right so that God can use you the way that he want to use you. Are you hearing me today? So sometimes he has to make you less attractive to others than yourself so he can make you the person that he created you to be. Yeah. I, don't know, I have to be crow. I go to, go to church and people ain't dressed right and they preaching to me. Listen, I can't focus because you ain't dressed right. You need to come in here with something on that I ain't paying attention to you, but I'm listening. All right, all right. The subject was less perfect, the subject was less attractive, and the subject was less useful. Yes. See, in this society, if God ain't using us, we think something is wrong. But it's a time when he's not using you when he's doing the best work. Right. It's not up here preaching because I'm being used now. But it's when I was armor bearing when I felt like something was wrong. Right. When I felt like I was stagnant. God, but I was just carrying cups and carrying jackets and carrying books. Y'all not yeah. helping me in this church yeah. today. It was then when he was teaching me how to be what I was going to be anyway. Yeah. But we think God ain't working, but he works when you serve. He right. works when you assist. He yeah. works when you help. Right. And not the main attraction. You're not talking to me today. Right. That's when he does his best work on you. Because believe you me, when you get in the light, it gets hot in the light. There's a lot of scrutiny in the light. And maybe your lifestyle can't handle to the Y'all not talking to me. He has to get you ready for people that talk about you that don't even know you. He gotta get you ready for people that criticize you and they don't even understand. He gotta get you ready for people that gossip just because they want you. He gotta get you ready for haters because they mad you shining and they don't have the grind that you got. He gotta get Church. He got to get you ready for one day I support your anointing. Oh, you wasn't anointed today. No, baby, I was anointed from the day God created me. Yeah. You got to get you ready for people that love you one day, but the next day they're ready to walk out on you. He gets you ready when you're serving. He gets you ready when you're helping. He gets you ready when you're behind the scenes because you might not be ready for it. So the part of formed it, Jonathan, into another pot. When you've been God, get, trying to get God to fix what you want him to fix, God said, I'm going to make you something else that you... <laughs> he said he formed it into another pot. When you wanted to be a vase, he made you a boss. Okay, y'all. He formed you into a another pot. I feel like shouting. You never thought you'd be the businessman you are, but when you decided to make him, let him form you, he formed yes. you into another yes. pot. Yes. He made you another yes. pot. He made you another vessel. Yes. He made you something you didn't even thought you could be. Yes. He made you, y'all not hearing me today, he shaped you into something you never thought you'd be. He formed you into, somebody say, another pot. And then shaping it as it seemed best to him. God is not going to make you a better you. He's going to make you a different and then a better you. Yes. Maybe you've been trying to be the same old anointed you. The same prayer happened every time. The same way God used you. You've locked God into something. And God said, I'm going to make you something you never thought you could be. Are y'all in here today? God is going to make you, somebody say, a new pot. He's going to make you something that you've never, ever been before. Am I helping you in here today? Maybe you fix your mind and you put in your mind a visual of what you thought you to be. I need you to understand, whatever you come up with, what God is doing is greater. God is going to make you what's best for him. He said as he was shaping it, it was marred in his hands. It didn't have no shape but no form. It was almost slipping out of his hands as he shaping it. It's, it's marred. It, it, it's ugly. Have you ever seen a potter's wheel? It, it, it don't, that's the finished product, right, but, right. but before it's just an old muddy thing yeah. you got to work with. Yeah. You know, he got to work with your attitude. Right. He got to work with your insensitivity. Right. He got to work with you. He, he got to work with you. Yes. He just working with it. He said it was marred. It was less attractive. It was ugly. It was not. He couldn't use it yet. He couldn't pour into it yet. He got to shape it first before he poured into it. So he's working with it. He's working with it. But he didn't work it to what the pot wanted. Right, right. He didn't work the, per the, pot, the pot to what the pot requested. Yeah. Yes. Lord, make me famous. He didn't work with you. Right. Yeah. 
All my the whole generation will be famous through Facebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make right. me famous, Lord. Make me a wonder, Lord. I want to show us talking to your man the other day. He said, I want God to bless me so I can show how God can use the life. Yeah. Maybe that's why you almost 30 and never been blessed. Right. Because the reason you want to be blessed is wrong. Right. So if you're saying God bless me, the content's got to get right before God right, bless you. Right, right. Y'all yeah. don't like me. Right, right. You're asking God to bless you for a purpose you haven't given him. Yes, right. yes. You're asking God to increase you for you want God to give you money so you can go floss for your family. Yeah. Oh, but God will give you money so you can be a blessing to people. Yes, right. God will give you money so you can help people. But yes. you ain't helping nobody so ain't no money coming. Yes, right. yes. You want to do business so you can say you're an entrepreneur. Yes. But it ain't about you saying you're an entrepreneur. It's about what you're going to do with the money which y'all not helping me in here. He's going to bless people that are blessing other people. He's going to help people that are going to help other people. He's going to help people that want to help people. Do you really just want to be seen or do you want to help people? Say, Lord, make me over again. Make me over again. Give me a heart for people again. I know you've been hurt. I know you've been abused. I know you were even abandoned. But Lord, make me over again. Give me the capacity to love again. Some people don't even love. You're not the same. You can't even take a caress on your back. You've been hurt so bad. But yet think you got life and purpose to give somebody else and can't nobody love you. You need to get your feelings and your emotions for the people of God back again. And not what God can do for you. You need to be moved by compassion and not performance. Say, God, See your help. I really want to see your love. Get you from this trying to prove a point to actually saying, I want to help people. Lord, make me yes. over. Yes. Again, I don't spend this time because I want to look cute, but I spend this time because I want to help people. I don't just want to talk to the people that got money, but I want to talk to the people that ain't got to die. Yes. I want to help people. I want to not talk to the people with the mansion, but I want to talk to the guy with the tenant of the bridge. Yes. I want to help people. I want to help people change the, however I can help you. Yes. I might not be able to give you a million dollars, but I can definitely give you five or ten more than you got. I want to help. When was the last time you didn't? See, but we helping people that don't need help and call that help. That ain't help. You just making them better than what they are. If you give somebody a place to stay, they had a place to stay. You just gave them a better place to stay. You didn't help them. Y'all not hearing me today. But we need to help people. How about people that don't have nowhere to sleep? How about people that ain't got nothing to eat? How about people that ain't got nowhere to go? How many about people that got felonies? That's who need a job. Y'all ain't talking to me. You trying to start business, but we need to help people that got, can't get no job. Yes, Say, Lord, make me. Over. I got about 10 people like, what is he talking about? I'm talking about, I'm not satisfied with preaching to you. How can I help you? I'm not satisfied with giving you a good word. Well, I need you to understand there's some stuff going on in us that needs to be made over. Yes, Lord. How many times have you came to church over and over again hoping the sermon gets you right? And you never went to the God of the sermon. You go home and, and mold over the sermon, but don't mold over the God of the sermon. Lord, make the church over again. We see everything but ourselves. Say, Lord, make me over again. We have a gimme, gimme, gimme generation, but we don't give, give, give. Lord, make me over again. It's become a show, it's become fun. I said, God, I don't want it no more. I want to help people make yes, me over again. Yes, Jesus. <laughs> you want to know why he'll give it to me? Because he know I'll do something with right, it. Right. You want to know why it always comes my way? Because I have an agenda to do something yes, with it. Jesus. You want to know why you can't get your hands on it and you never seem to get where you need to be? Because your agenda for it is right. 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 But when you get an agenda for it, he'll give you the resources that nobody's talking to me anymore. Right. Say, Lord. <laughs> Today I come to talk to people that want to be different. Yes, Jesus. You see your flaws. Amen. You see your shortcomings. Yes, Lord. You see your issues. You see that you're marred. Yes. But you say, God, do it in me again. I haven't been able to control my emotions. Yes. I haven't been able to control myself. I haven't been able to change. 
And when you get to that place, you say, God, I need you to do it. I've tried everything in my own power. I went and studied the word that was preached. It didn't work. I tried to pray for more than an hour. It didn't do it. Lord, I need you to make me over. I've been struggling with this thing too long. It's not only plagued me, but it's plagued my family. But it's time I came out of this situation. The other day I was ministering to somebody, and they live in the projects. And they have to sell their body to make money. And the person began to cry and plead with me to help them. Please help me. Please help me. Crying, please help me, because she knew I could. Please help me. Please help me. But why don't we come to God and say, please help me? We put our trust in men and in people, and they always let us down. And we forget about a God that's surely going to make it all right. Today, I want to talk to people that say that want to say to God, please help me, God. Please change my situation. I never forget coming down as a young man, 23, 24 years old, preacher preaching this message. It was good. It got me motivated and excited. But I couldn't wait to get to the altar of God. Where I can, I will remember the scripture where he said, cast all your cares upon yes. me and I'll give you rest. Yes. He would say, approach the throne of grace boldly so you could obtain grace and mercy. Yes. So I would come down to the altar after the message and I would just cry and I would just cry. Yes. I said, Lord, I don't want to smoke weed no more. Yes. Lord, I don't want to sleep around no more. I said, Lord, I don't want to be how I've been no more. Lord, I don't want to be without these things that I need. I can't take care of my family. I said, God, leave me over. Yes. I have a moment with God. And I get up. And I go back to my seat. And it seems like things didn't change. But come Monday, I feel a little bit better about it. Come Tuesday, I'll be a little bit stronger. Come Wednesday, I've been able to abstain a little bit longer. Come Friday, I ain't got a taste for the blunt no more. Come Saturday, I've been renewed again. And I kept, but, but I didn't stop there. Sunday rolled around again. And I'm back at the altar, Lord. I know you're not through with me yet. Yes, but once he got me delivered, I begin to say, Lord, use me, Lord. Don't leave me here just as a job working man. Don't leave me here just as a take care of my family man. I know you didn't deliver me just to make me this God. But there's God. I said, use me, Lord. Yes, Give me a vision. Anoint me. Make me different. Set me aside. And I begin to pray that prayer. Not only would I come to the altar, but when I'm at home, I pray that prayer. When I'm at work, I'll, be, I'll go take breaks just to pray that prayer. Lord, use me. Send somebody to me that needs prayer. I go. I get in my car and I drive downtown. I find homeless people and I give them hundreds of dollars. I just want to bless somebody. I am your answer today. I am your turnaround today. I, use me, Lord. This generation is waiting on a platform when God is waiting on you to say yes. Everybody's waiting on a moment when every day is a moment. One day I was at my job, and the young man said, my wife, she tripping. He said, I don't know what to do. He said, I want to commit suicide. Because we were on the job, I took him out to the, we bought a dump, we bought a, the, the garbage dumpster. Yeah. And I, I said, God is using me. Yeah. At that time, I was a deacon in my church. But on my job, somebody saw enough light in me. Yeah. Not to ask me, is Jesus real? Right. But to pray for me, yes. I need life. Yes. Took him out to the dumpster because our boss was a devil worshiper. Mm -hmm. I took him out to the dumpster. I said, so no, I won't get fired for doing this. I started, I prayed my best prayer. We left, we went on. He eventually lost the job, he went on. I went on to open up a barber shop. And I'm in the barber shop and I see this nicely dressed young man, clean cut, in a nice suit, and he walks up. And it was him. And he said, man, when you, ever since you prayed for me at that dumpster, my whole life turned around. Yeah. Years later, years later, that prayer by the dumpster yes, Lord. made him old. Y'all yes, not hearing yes, me. Yes, Lord. It wasn't in church I was praying for him. Right. It was at the dumpster by yeah. the child. Mm. 
Now we got a generation that if you don't put them on the flyer, they mad. Okay. Okay. If they Facebook ain't pretty, they don't feel good about themselves. When, when God using you is the best feeling you can ever have, no yes. matter where yes. it is. Yes. Yes. I've had my best moments outside of church. Yes. Mama, do you remember when we were praying in your front room? I had been fasting all day, and I went to Dickie's Barbecue, and the Lord said, don't eat Dickie's Barbecue. I had been fasting. It was 6, 7 in the evening, and there was something going on at Mother's house. I went to Mother's house, and we began to pray. We began to pray, and I laid hands, and everybody in the whole room just fell out. Do you remember that, Mama? In the house. Yes, Lord. Not in church. Because church folk are some of the hardest people. Y'all right, immune right, to the Spirit right, of God. Right, Come on. Right. You're not hungry enough to receive right. that kind of miracle. Right. We need God to make us over again. Yeah. It was in the front room of Mama House I realized God had anointed me to bring healing. Y'all not talking. Yeah. The first time I prophesied, can I talk to you? Yes, Lord. I'm in my clothes. I'm making my way home. First time I prophesied was not even in my church. I was all over in my church, but I had got a speaking engagement on the East Coast. I was in Boston, Massachusetts. I go to Boston, Massachusetts, and I sat in the pulpit, and I started seeing stuff. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm seeing people lives right before me. It was like a movie. I look at somebody in the movie will flash over their head. And I see stuff. But the moment I mounted the pulpit, the place went crazy. People were shouting and crying. And I was just pointing people out. And they lied. I could see their life literally. And I was calling out what God was doing in their life. Those moments of coming down to the altar saying, God, use me. He didn't use me where I came to the altar. He used me where he needed me. Right, right. Yes, Lord. He used me for the place that he called me to. Do you want blessings or do you want God to use you? I know you need money, but if God use you, he'll make sure your money get right. <laughs> Seek ye first.